bunch of these. Me too. Hello, I'm Shari Lewis. I happen to have 10 of these. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. You too? Let me just recheck that. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. How do you like that? I just started and already I've lost one. Oh, no, I didn't. There it is. <laughs> You want to pull that on your friends, here's what you do. When you put your fingers together, you leave one finger behind. It's real funny. And the funny thing is that from the front, it doesn't even look like one is missing. Now that's one. You're about to see 101 things for kids to do that are fun. Magic tricks that are really slick. You'll see them once, you'll do them quick. Easy puppets you can make in a minute, and this video cassette has lots more in it. Games, jokes, and dopey dares, and if you don't like them all, who cares with 101 things to do? I just know there's a bunch for you. 101, that's a lot. Let me tell you what this is not. This is not a TV show. What you've got is a home video. So if you see a stunt that leaves you grinning, run it again from the beginning. But don't just view it. Do it. You are really in control. It's your tape. Let it roll till you come to a puppet or a game or a riddle or a favorite trick. Then quick, push the button, stop the tape and rewind till you find the beginning of the thing that you like best. Then view it and do it. Remember the number of your favorite stunt. That way you won't have to hunt. And the next time that you want to share your favorite with a friend, it'll still be there. Fast forward till you're near the spot. Find the one that you like a lot. Then view it and do it. You can do everything that you're going to see. If you do as I do right along with me. Now don't worry about a thing. You'll find it's true that if you trust you, there's nothing you can't do. I promise by the time we're done, you'll be doing lots of things that are fun. Sherry's gonna show us 101. But don't just view them. Do them. Where is number two? Did you ever wonder how those railroad cars link up? There's a great length of track, and the track winds around to the front, and there's a railroad car on it, and the track winds around to the back and there's another railroad car on it. And the cars get closer and closer and closer, and when they get really close, they link up. You know how you do that? You start with a skinny strip of paper. You bring one end around to the front, and you put a paper clip on, and then you bring the other end around to the back, and you only put the paper clip on the two back parts of the paper, not on the front part. And then as you pull and pull, most of the time, they link up. You start with a rubber ball that's lost its bounce, and you have somebody cut a slit in it for you. That becomes the mouth. And then you draw eyes and a nose, and you got a great puppet. How are you feeling? Hungry. Yum, 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 yum. Hmm. He looks familiar, doesn't he? Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. Nothing but four circles. Can you add two straight lines and change it into a really good word? Here's how you can. One straight line, two straight lines. Now that's a good word. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Who cares? Who cares? Somebody must care. People have been talking about how Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers for years. How come? I think because it's so hard. <laughs> yeah, let me hear you say it. Say what? Say Peter, Peter, Piper, Piper, pick, pick the pack of pack of pickled, pickled peppers. That doesn't say the whole thing together. Peter Piper picked the pickle poopled peepers. No, I mean pickled poopers. No. Peter Piper picked the poop, put the fight, pick the peak. Wait a second. Peter Pickle, Peter Pickle. I never heard of him. Picky, picky, picky. <laughs> The hard thing is to say the whole thing three times fast. Mm -mm. I like to say short ones fast. Like what? Like a noise, a noise, an oyster. A noise, a noise, an oyster, a noise, a noise, an oyster, a noise, a noise, an oyster. Good. What's your favorite? Good blood, bad blood. I could say that without moving my lips. Let me see. Good blood, oh, oh no, no lips. Good blood, bad blood, good blood, bad blood, good blood, bad blood. Good! Hey, you're a ventriloquist. I'm a vanilla twist. 
Do you know how to play Drown the Penny? It's a nice game. You fill the cup with water. You leave it in the sink, thank you very much. You cover it with a napkin. Do you know how to play now? No, not yet? Good. Okay, you surround it with a rubber band. You place a penny on top of the napkin, and then you take turns with a friend poking holes in the napkin, and you try not to be the one who pokes the hole that makes the penny fall down into the glass. a lot of play for a penny, let me tell you. I just knocked it into the glass, so I guess I'm the loser. But I had fun, so I guess I'm the winner. Huh? So you say to your friends, boy, I have so much self-control. I can make myself wrinkled. I can tear myself up. I can throw myself on the ground, and I can jump on myself. And then you show them myself. I can wrinkle myself. I can rip myself into smithereens. I can throw myself on the ground. And I can jump on myself. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> Do you know that if you put your fingertips together and you put your elbows out, your friend grabbing your wrists and pulling without jerking will not be able to separate your fingertips? It's amazing. I need a helping hand to show you. Do I have a helping hand anywhere? Oh, I have oh, a bunch of helping hands. I like animals. The rest of you guys, go away. Get rid of your banana, gorilla, and you can help me. Okay, now I'm putting my fingertips together. Gorilla, grab my wrists and pull apart as hard as you can. Go ahead, pull, pull. And he cannot pull my wrists apart. It is amazing. Try it with a friend. Ah! Hello there. My name is Hush Puppy, and um, I can spell my name backwards in the same amount of time that it takes me to spell it forwards. You want to see? H-U-S-H-P-U-P-P-Y. And now, backwards. H-U-S-H-P-U-P-P-Y. I have a quarter and I have a penny. I'm going to take the penny and put it in my pocket. Now... Where's the penny? In your pocket, you say. No, I say. It's in my hand. How did it get there, you say? Here's how. I started with the penny in my hand, the quarter on top of it, and another penny on top. So when I took the penny and put it in my pocket, what I really did was close my fist and flip the coins over so the bottom penny popped into view. That's it. Want to try? This is almost my favorite instant puppet. You start with a man's handkerchief and you fold it in half so you get a triangle. Whoop, whoop, whoop. At the point, you make a knot. You get the point, do you not? Lay the knot down on the table so it's facing you. There we go. And put the back of your wrist against it and spread your fingers. Some fabric will be peeking between the pointer and the middle finger. Pull it in and hold it in place with your thumb. Then bend down your little finger and your ring finger and tuck lots of fabric into that on one side and all the fabric from the other side into it. And then stand up your Jack B. Nimble puppet and you can draw eyes and in a mouth, even a nose if you wish. And he can do the waltz clog, east side. Or he can do a split, whoop, no, come on, whoop. Or he can be a kicker on a soccer team. <sighs> or he could walk away with the show. It's a riddle. How much dirt is there in a hole one foot wide, one foot deep, and one foot long? Hmm? No, 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 no matter how long, wide, or deep it is, if it's a hole, there's no dirt in it. Don't you know nothing? Huh? Ruffy has such a wonderful face. He lives at San Diego Zoo. Oh, 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 no, that's my pen. You can't eat my pen. Give me my pen. Here's a grape for you. This is a grape for you. Doesn't want a grape. He only wants a... That's it. There you go, Ruffy. Ruffy's beautiful. I'm going to make myself a face as funny as Ruffy's. I'm going to draw two eyes and one huge mouth, a huge silly mouth. And I'm going to trace a quarter, because that's the right size for this mini mask. And now I'm going to tear out the hole. Oh, Ruffy wants the pen again. You may not have it. I'm going to tear out the hole. Just a minute, Ruffy. You're going to love this. You're going to love this. And it's a mini mask. 
Charlie Horse, I'll bet you can't give me the wrong answer to four questions in a row. You mean lie. No, I don't mean lie. I mean, no matter what I ask you, I'll bet you can't give me the wrong answer to four questions in a row. Cancel. Okay. Are you an elephant? Yes. Uh, do you eat luggage? Um, yum, yum, yes. Uh, do you have purple teeth? Mm-hmm. Let's see, that was elephant, luggage, teeth. That's three questions so far, right? Yeah. Gotcha! Boy, am I dumb. Uh-huh. Try it on a friend. See if your friends can guess what four-letter word is the same forwards, backwards, and upside down. And then you show them the word is noon. Forwards, N-O-O-N. Backwards, N-O-O-N. And upside down, N-O-O-N. You know, your house is probably a fun house full of playthings just like mine is. But you have to know where to find the fun. Now, do you have... Half a soda straw, a stub of a pencil. I'm going to use a cotton swab stick. Any stick will do. Make a circle between your thumb and your pointer finger and lay the stick over the circle. The aim of the game is to gently toss your hand up into the air and make that stick come down straight between the circle. Here we go. <laughs> Good trick. You put a penny into the middle of a piece of paper and you bring up the bottom and you bring down the top and you roll it up and then you say blow. And when your friends have blown, you go Rah! and you tear the paper in half. The penny has disappeared. Where did it go? It's there in my lap. You know how it got there? Here's how you do the trick. You take the piece of paper and you put the penny in the middle. You bring the bottom up, you bring the top down. And when you turn it around, penny falls out of the chute right into your fingers. Yeah, you're rolling it very busily at that time. And so, of course, when you tear the paper up, the penny has disappeared. Why wasn't it in my hand? Well, when I was over here, I just dropped it in my lap. You can make this puppet with a 3 by 5 card or with somebody's business card. I'm going to use the business card. You draw eyes. Two is a good number. You pick it up and you circle it about and make a finger sandwich with your pointer finger inside. Grab it on the edges, and with your knuckle, knuckle it in. There you go. Ow! Ooh! I'm sorry, is my finger in your back? It's all right. Okay, you can do this with sticks or with pencils or anything. I'm using cotton swab sticks. I have one, two, three, four, and five is how many? Five and four is nine. Right. Wrong. Five and four is ten. Sure, five and four is ten. Watch. Here's one, two, three, four. And add five more. And you get ten. This is definitely the silliest and also one of my favorites. Um, you start with a paper napkin. Don't unfold it. Leave it the way it starts, you know, as a square. And... You're going to make a napkin bug, so you want to make buggy legs by twisting each of the legs. There we go. Now you fluff up the center and stick it on a lemon. Right onto a lemon. And then you draw crabby, buggy eyes. Two eyes, one nose, and an evil mouth of teeth. There we go. Oh, that looks evil. And what you've got is a napkin bug. And the funny part is the way the napkin bug moves when you poke it. It scuttles all over the table until it goes off the end of the table. Now, this stunt is very old, and it'll probably work best on somebody who is younger than you are. I'm younger than you are. Well, good, then it'll work. It's a story. I like stories. I know. Pete and Repeat were brothers. Pete and Repeat went down the river in a boat. Pete fell out. Who was left? Repeat. Of course I will. Pete and Repeat were brothers. Pete and Repeat went down the river in a boat. Pete fell out. Who was left? Repeat. Of course I will. Pete and Repeat were brothers. Pete and Repeat went down the river in a boat. Pete fell out. Who was left? Repeat. Pete and Repeat were brothers. Pete and Repeat went down the river in a boat. Pete fell out. Who was left? Repeat. Pete and Repeat were brothers. Pete and Repeat went down the river in a boat. Pete fell out. Who was left? Repeat. Pete and Repeat. Your friends will be amazed when you say, I'll bet you I can divide this sheet of paper into three equal pieces with just one cut. And your friends will fidget around with the paper and then you take it from them and you show them how it's done. You fold the piece of paper in half. There it is, in half. Now you 
fold it in thirds. You just bring it over on itself until it's in thirds, and then you sharpen those folds really good. All right. Now, you see there's a center fold over here. Well, you tear along the crease that you've made that's closest to the center fold. Just rip off that piece that's closest to the center fold, and when you open it up, you will find that you have torn the sheet into three equal pieces with just one tear. Oh, my. Three rows of coins. The first, heads, tails, heads. The second, tails, heads, tails. The third, heads, tails, heads. The aim of the game to make the first row all heads. The second, all tails. The third, all heads. The challenge to do it by touching only one nickel. The solution, you put your finger on the middle bottom and you bring it around to the top and you push down on the middle coins. Then still touching only that one nickel, you turn it over and you have all heads, all tails, all heads. <laughs> you did it. See if your friends can guess how to do it. Here's how you make a paper cup that will really hold water very well. You start with a square of paper and you fold it so that it becomes a triangle. Then you bring the left corner over to meet the right edge. You bring the right corner over to meet the other side. You take the top flap and fold it down. You turn it over. You take the top flap and fold it down. You hold it up, pop it open, pour it in, and drink it up. Pretty good, huh? Okay. We have a couple of jokes for you to tell. Yeah, me first. Oh. How do you get nuts from a squirrel? How do you get nuts from a squirrel? Easy. You go up to a squirrel and you say, this is a stick-up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mine's better. Really? Yes. Um, what animal could jump as high as a tree? What animal could jump as high as a tree? Any animal. Trees can't jump. <laughs> Here is a puppet that you can pull out of your pocket any old time. You take a handkerchief or a scarf, doesn't matter, and put the two ends together and make a knot using those two ends to be the ears of your funny bunny. Yes, it's going to be a funny bunny. There's the head. And then you stick your finger into the knot, the pointer finger, right up into the knot. Don't think it's easy. Being a puppeteer is not meant to be easy. Then you wrap the handkerchief around your hand and you take a rubber band, slip it over your thumb, which is sticking out, around the back and over your pointer finger and you've made a funny bunny puppet. Hey, how do you like your new body? Oh, you like it? Oh, good. Can you draw a circle with a dot in the middle of it without lifting your pen? Yes, 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 you can. I wouldn't have brought it up otherwise. Here's how. You take the bottom corner and you fold it up, making a flap. Right off the edge of that flap, you draw your dot, and then you come down onto the flap, and you circle around. And when you get to the other end of the flap, you lift the flap, you do not lift your pen, and you complete your circle. And you did it! You drew a circle with a dot in the center without lifting your pen. Yay! Did you know that you can multiply by nine on your fingertips? It's wonderful. Put down the first finger for one times nine. The answer is on your hands. Nine. Put down the second finger for two times nine. The answer is on your hands. One, eight. Two times nine is 18. Third finger, three times nine. The answer is on your hands. Two, seven. Three times nine is 27. Four. Four times nine is three, six, 36. Works all the way up to nine. Ninth finger down. Nine times nine is eight and one, 81. <laughs> Now, here's a heck of a helicopter. You start with a skinny strip of pretty long paper, fold it in half, sharpen your fold, bring the top edge down and pull it out to one side. Turn it around, pull the top edge on the other side out to the other side, and then you stick a paper clip on the bottom. Then you hold it in the air and you watch it twirl, slow twirl. <laughs> You want to shrink your pinky? Never occurred to you, huh? That's fun to do. Here's how you do it. Like that? There's a trick to it. I mean, of course, this is what you're doing. 
But the trick is that you keep these fingers in front of that bending finger so nobody can see it bend. And with your thumb, you're pushing the tip forward so the tip doesn't just collapse out of sight, like this. Whoop, whoop. Shelly, don't shrink any fingers on your other hand. How would you like to be the number one magician on your block? Oh, yeah. Well, everybody wants to be number one, so here's a number one trick. Pick a number from one to five. Now, don't tell me. Double it. Add two. I'll wait. Divide by two. And now, you remember the original number you started with? Subtract that number from what's left. And when I say three, we're all going to shout out your number. Really? Yep. Here we go. One, two, three. One. one. Right? Right? See, everybody wants to be number one. This is a juggling stunt that will really impress your friends. You put a pile of coins on your elbow, and you turn your hand so the palm is facing the coins, and then you try and catch them. Here we go, Shari. It's easy. You have to do it two, three times to get the knack of it. And the secret is, don't throw the coins up in the air, but just drop your elbow and let your hand be where your elbow was. And you'll do it. You mention any animal, and I'll draw it. Rhinoceros. Okay. You mentioned a rhinoceros. And I drew it. Oh, no. Did you ever build a card castle? Is that the most frustrating thing in the world? The minute it's up, gone with the wind. Well, it doesn't have to be. Build yourself a pattern on one card. Draw and cut two slits on the top, two slits on the bottom, three slits on each side. And then trace that pattern on every card in some old deck. Just trace it, and then, you know, cut those slits. And then when you have lots of cards that have slits in them, you can just fit them together like building blocks. They're fantastic. They actually stay together. And there's the beginning of a card castle. Would you like to see a card castle built? It's a little one, but it's a nice card castle because I can build up and up instead of it going... You think you're strong? You think you're strong, eh? I bet you can't break a skinny little toothpick. Well, here's one way you cannot break a skinny little toothpick. Put it under your pointer finger, over your middle finger, under your ring finger. And you will find that if you keep your fingers together and your thumb out, in that position, you cannot break this little toothpick. It's ridiculous. I bet your buddies can't do it either. And then when they're all finished trying, you put your hand near a table and you say, here's how you break it. And you go, bang. And you'll break the toothpick. Now, this game is called Ha Ha. Ha Ha. No, you have to say the Ha Ha's without laughing. And the person who keeps the straightest face the longest is the winner. What do you do? Well, I say Ha. And then the second person, I'm the second person, says, ha ha. And then I say, ha ha ha. And you say, ha 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 ha. And I say, ha 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 ha. And you say, ha 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 I lose. Yes. It's a magic trick. You borrow a dollar bill. You say, I'll give it back, I'll give it back. And then you crumple it into a ball and you say, whenever I do a magic trick with a dollar bill, I always rub it on my elbow for good luck. And so you rub and you rub and you rub and you say, is that enough rubbing? No, I don't think so. And you rub and you rub and then you go, Ugh. and you'll find that you don't have just one dollar bill. What you have, oh my goodness, is two dollar bills. So you give your friend back one and you keep the other as your tip. <laughs> okay, here's how you do it. Before you start, when you're really alone, you crumple up a dollar bill and you stick it behind your neck in your collar. Can you see it there? All right. Now, when you start the, the show, you borrow the dollar bill. You crumple it up and you rub it on your elbow. And while you're rubbing it, what you're really doing is grabbing it into your fingers. See, like this. Now, your fingers will hide it. You bring your hand around and you say, is that enough rubbing? No. And you rub it on the other elbow. And then you go, oof. And you have not one dollar bill, but two dollar bills. What a way to double your money, huh? I made a fish out of eight toothpicks. It's facing in this direction. Moving just three toothpicks, could you turn it so it was facing in the opposite direction? Sure you could. Here's how. You take away the bottom of the face, the bottom fin, and the bottom tail, and they become the top of the face, the top of the tail, and the top fin. I see. 
Now, this is an optical illusion. You roll a piece of paper into a very skinny tube, but I mean a really skinny tube, and then you look through it, keeping both eyes open, not doing this routine the way you normally do. Put the palm of your other hand against the tube and bring it closer and further away as you look through with both eyes, and it will look as though the hole is going right through the center of your hand. Now, it's not much for you to watch me doing it, but I tell you, it's a shock as you do it yourself and you see that hole going right through the center of your hand. I love it. I cut out an outline of a ghost. It's a nice ghost, but it doesn't have to be a ghost. It could be a snowman or a Christmas tree. And then I covered the whole ghost with a very soft lead pencil. It was fun covering it in, too. Then I dipped a piece of Kleenex into some water and holding the pattern very tightly, I wipe the lead from the ghost onto the paper around it. And the funny thing is that you'll get a ghost of an outline of your ghost or your snowman or your Christmas tree makes a wonderful um, greeting card or stationery, and it makes sensational invitation to a party. Can I come? Oh, sure you can come. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, you're invited too. Sure. Yeah. Play out a word alone or with friends. You write out the whole alphabet and you give each letter a number in numerical order. So A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, Z is 26. The aim of the game is to make up a dozen words of three letters each. But since each letter has a number, what you're trying to do is make up words that have a great sum. So um, the person who comes up with the highest total at the end of the game is the winner. A word like wow. W-O-W -W is 23, 15, 23, which is 61. And that's a better word than zoo. Z-O-O, -O, 26, 15, 15, which is uh, only 56. How sad. Sherry, I bet you I can make you open your eyes. Charlie, Rose, my eyes are already open. Oh, yeah. Okay, close your eyes. No, not that way. What? Ah, see, I made you open your eyes. <sighs> Thank you. You know, you can use your TV set as a game board. Before the show, make a list of the things you think you might see on the show. Here's my list. It includes a wrecked car, garage mechanic, flagpole, pig, rocking chair, clothes on a clothesline, an injured person, and a baby. What show do you think I'm going to watch? And then as you watch the show, you cross off each thing as it appears on the screen. And if everybody in the room makes their own list, and then you watch the show together, you can see who in your house is the best guesser. I'm going to show you something that I never saw, that you never saw, that we never saw, that nobody ever saw, and which, after we have seen it, nobody will ever see again. That's what you say to your friends. And then you take a peanut, and you break it open. And you show them the nut, and you say, I never saw that before, you never saw that before. Um, nobody's ever going to see it again. Mm, don't talk with your mouth full. I can't believe she said that. Oh. You say to a friend, I'll bet you can't fix a dollar bill so it is almost impossible to tear. And before your friend starts ripping up the parent's money, here's what you do. You start rolling at one corner. You roll a compact, tight little roll right from the corner until you've rolled up the whole dollar bill. And when you have that skinny stick, you will find it's almost impossible to tear. Well, maybe Superman can do it. But I can't, and I'll bet you can't either. You see, there were these two skunks. One was named in, and the other was named out. And whenever out was out, in was in, and whenever out was in, in was out. Well, one day the mother skunk said, out, please go out and find in and bring in in. And in a second, out brought in in, and the mother skunk said, out, how did you find in so quickly? And out said, instinct. <laughs> I call this puppet Fatima. You make it out of a man's handkerchief. You could do it. Um, right on the edge, between the two corners, you make a knot. That is a knot. And then you pull out the two corners, because that's Fatima's head, and here are Fatima's arms. You turn Fatima upside down so she's hanging with the blood rushing to her head, and you twirl the handkerchief away from you, and you twirl and you twirl and you twirl and you twirl and you twirl, and, you twirl, and then you hold the two legs together, and you spread the arms, and this is Fatima. Fatima was a dancer gay for 50 cents. She danced this way, but if a dollar you would pay, she'd go ta ra ra boom Woo! 
I think the reason I like tricky tests of strength is because I don't have any. Strength, that is. But I do have tricks up my sleeve, and you can have them too. I really like this test of strength. It's interesting. I'm going to have a friend of mine help me, the gorilla. I know you don't have a gorilla to help you. You do have a gorilla. Well, then you can have your gorilla help you. Give your friend, gorilla or no, a broomstick or a mop or some stick. And as long as your friend keeps his feet together and doesn't lean with his whole body, just pushes with his hands, you can keep that stick from moving forward with nothing but your little thumb. Okay, push, gorilla. And it is amazing with your thumb in that position. The stick won't come forward. Oh, it makes me feel so strong. Ah! Why should I hit myself? It's a game. I call it Circle of Words. I traced the mouth of a cup and made a circle. At the very top, I write a three-letter word. T-O-P. Top. Okay, the last letter is P. The first letter of the next word is P. P-I-N, pin. Last letter is N. First letter is N. N-E-T, knit. Last letter is T. First letter is P. T-A-N, tan. Last letter is N. First letter is N. N-O-W, now. Last letter is W. First letter is W. W-E-T, wet. Last letter is T, first letter is T. T-I-N, tin. Last letter is N, first letter is N, N-O-T, not. And that is my circle of words, like it or not. Only rule is no one word is used twice as you make your circle of words. You got it? Adding only two straight lines, can you make another arrow just like the two in the picture? Sure you can. Here's how. One straight line, two straight lines. A good car game is one where you need no equipment, no pencil, no paper, no need to keep score, nothing. Like what? Well, um, games based on the alphabet are great. Why? Because you always know where you are. Give me an example. Example, okay. Alpha jobs. How do you play? The first player has to name a job or a profession. What's that? Something somebody does for a living? Oh, yeah. That starts with the letter A. Um, astronaut. Good. Thank you. Now, the second player... Me? Yeah. ...has to name a job starting with a B. But Baseball player. Good. <laughs> C. Carpenter. D. 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 Dentist. Excellent. Um, E. Excellent. Electrician. F. It's a magic trick you do with your bare hands. You say to your friends, pick a card, any card, any card at all, show it to everybody, but not me, of course. Put it back on the deck, and then you put the deck back into the box in which it came, and you say, I'm going to make the selected card rise up right before your eyes, and will wonders never cease? The selected card rose up out of the deck. How did that happen? Looking back. You see, before I started, um, I cut a rectangle, a hole in the back of the box. The selected card, which was put on top of the deck, is right next to the hole. So when I push up with my thumb, it is the selected card that rose up out of the deck. You did that trick with nothing but your bare hands. This is a game called Jump-A-Lump. I made 16 holes in the ground. Um, if you're playing indoors, just make 16 dots on a piece of paper. And instead of using rocks in each hole, you can use little wadded up balls of paper. Leave one hole empty. And then because the game is called Jump-A-Lump, you take turns jumping a lump and taking it away. I jump a lump and you jump a lump and I jump a lump and you jump a lump and I jump a lump and you jump a lump. You say to a friend, in one breath, can you name eight parts of the body that you can spell with three letters? Uh, give me a hint. Arm, A-R-M. Good. I give up. Oh, swell. They are arm, leg, eye, ear, lip, hip, toe, and rib. <laughs> I call this fellow Silly Billy, which is pretty funny since I'm leaving the choice of bill or beak to you. Uh, there's feet. It's going to be a bird. And there's wings. I know it looks like a pear. <laughs> and there's eyes. Oh, cross-eyed. And there's his, his beak. But I'm going to cut the beak. And then I'm going to stick the scissor right through the beak. And there's Silly Billy. Hello! Oh, hello! How are you? Hello! Is, is hello all you can say? Goodbye! Oh, I guess that's it. What word starts with an E and usually only contains one letter? Envelope starts with an E and it usually only contains one letter. Don't hit me! Don't hit me! 
Carrie, what word is always pronounced wrong? What word is always pronounced wrong? Well, real little kids, instead of saying spaghetti, often say piscetti. No, no, not little kids. What word is always pronounced wrong? Um, some people have trouble with the word anonymity. No, no, not some people. What word is always pronounced wrong? I give up. What word is always pronounced wrong? Wrong. Oh, right. No, wrong. Gotcha. Do you know that a 98-pound weakling, like, say, me, can put her finger on the top of her head, and a big, strong guy can grab her wrist and pull and won't be able to lift that finger off the head? It works that way. I don't know why. Now, there are only two rules. Number one, the person may not grab the wrist and jerk, only pull with a steady tug. And also, the person may not brace the elbow against the body. I got a helping hand who's going to show you. Come on, helping hand, grab my wrist and pull with a steady tug with all your strength. Come on, pull, pull. You can pull harder than that. Can't get it off my head. I don't know why. Try it. <laughs> Now, when you get finished with this one, your friends will groan. But that's only because they didn't think of it first. You say to them, I'll bet you I can stick out my tongue and touch my ear. And they'll make all kinds of funny faces going, mm, mm. and then when they're finished with their faces, you do what you said you were going to do in the first place. You stick out your tongue and you touch your ear. That's all. If you guys like tongue twisters as much as I do, yeah, we might invite you in for a cup of proper coffee in a copper coffee cup. Good. But you would have to drink three times fast. <laughs> yes. And then I would inquire about the health of your pets. 66 sick chicks, 66 sick chicks, 66 sick chicks. Good. And then you could ask what's making my pet sick. What is it? When a big black bug bit my big black bear, it made my big black bear bleed blood. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Fun twisters a tongue. Fun twisters a tongue? That's stupid. Yes. Nevertheless. Yes. I like them. <laughs> yes. Me too. Right now, do as I do. Put your fingertips together so that they're all touching. Now bend down your middle finger so that the knuckles are touching. Keep those knuckles together and you will find that with the knuckles together you can separate your thumbs, you can separate your pointer finger, you can separate your little finger, but with the knuckles together, you cannot get those ring fingers apart. Or at least, I can't. Can you? This is Ruffy the toucan from the San Diego Zoo and he's so colorful I'm gonna show you how to make carbon paper with crayons. You color all kinds of colors onto a piece of paper and then you turn it face down and with a sharp pencil you draw whatever you want to draw on the crayon carbon paper. I'm making Lamb Chop's sweet face because I like her face. And there we have Lamb Chop's face and when I lift it up the picture will be on the paper below. Just, I'm going to give her ears, just as I drew it. There we go. There's Lamb Chop. And um, you can use this crayon carbon paper again and again by just adding more crayoning to it. Um, it's fun. Try it. Do you know there's a bunch of capital letters in the alphabet that are totally reversible? You can look at them in a mirror and they do not change shape. Do you know what they are? See if your friends can guess. Here's the answer. The letters that look the same backwards and forwards are A-H-I-M-O-T-U-V-W-X and why it's fantastic this is a real good game to play indoors on a rainy day because you play with socks balled up with a rubber band around them so the balls aren't going to break anything i call it sock ball now you take all the, the shoes out of the family closet and you line them up and then you try to pitch the sock balls into the shoes uh just pitch them right in oh look at that and i think that the big shoes should get fewer points and the little shoe oh look at that uh the, the little shoes uh less points listen make up your own rules it's sock ball so you say to your friends i'm going to turn myself into a rabbit in less than a minute and your friends will say ha, 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 and then you do it you take a scarf and you bring the edge to meet the center fold. You bring the other edge to meet the center fold. You pick it up in the middle. You lay it down on the table. And there's lots of flaps. Pick up the bottom flap and the top flap on each side in one hand. There's one. There's two. You bring your hands apart and you put the ears on your head and you say, Oh, I just turned myself into a rabbit. And it didn't even take a minute. <laughs> if a car has a horn 
but no motor and no wheels. How can it go? The car has a horn, but no motor and no wheels. How can it go? Beep, beep. <laughs> you say to your pals, can you take four away from four and be left with eight? Your friends will say no, and you say yes. And you take a piece of paper and you count the corners. One, two, three, four corners. And then you cut away one, two, three, four corners. You say, I just cut away four corners, and now I'm left with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In other words, you took four from four and you were left with eight. Ta da! It's a mystery. Oh, I love the mystery. <laughs> You're driving a bus. Yes. 120 people get on, six people get off. Two people get on, one person gets off. 12 people get on, 11 people get off. And the question is, what color are the bus driver's eyes? Well, how am I supposed to know that? The bus driver's eyes are black. How do you know? Because the first thing I said was, you're driving a bus. I'll get you for that. <laughs> Try it on a friend. What state is high in the middle? and round at both ends. Give up, give up, give up. The state that's high in the middle and round at both ends is Ohio. You break a toothpick in half and you say to your friends, I'll bet you I can balance that toothpick on my thumb without sticking it into my nail or anything like that. And your friends will try to balance it. And of course they won't be able to do it. And then you show them how it's done. You bend your thumb as much as you can. You put the toothpick into one of those creases right at your thumb. Straighten your thumb out, and you will balance the toothpick. Hey, can I have that toothpick? Who said that? Me. Sure you can. Thank you. Oh, uh, mmm. Here's a very nice envelope puppet that you can make. That's not the puppet. But you're going to put your hand like this and put your top fingers into the top point of the envelope and your bottom fingers into the bottom point of the envelope. And then you wet all the sticky stuff so that you and your envelope bird puppet will be inseparable. And then the stamp is the eye. You're a very nice envelope puppet. Worth writing home about. Oh, <laughs> that's a joke, right? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know that you have a magic fountain pen? Yes, you do, you do. Here it is. You just put it into your fist and you tap it right through your fist and then you tap on your fist with your magic pen and a dime will appear. How do I know a dime will appear? Because before you start, you'll put it there, right into the prong of the pen. Really? And then you hide it with your two fingers. That's all it takes. Then you put it into your fist, tap it right through your fist, and tap your fist with the magic pen, and the dime will appear. If you've got a pen, and you've got a dime, baby, you got a trick. When you're playing a game, do not trust scorekeeping to memory, because at the end of the game, each player may remember a different score. Instead, give each player um, ten Thingies. Doesn't matter what they are. Paper clips, little wadded up balls of paper, lima beans. I'm giving you 10 pennies. I got 10 pennies. And then each time one of the players gets a point, the other players have to give that winner one of their thingies. And the game is over when one of the players has won all of the opponent's thingies. I guess you win. 30 days, half September, June, July, and also last month. <laughs> I never could remember that poem. Can you? You don't have to, of course, because you've got the months right at your knuckles. No, not at your fingertips. You see, you have a knuckle that is a mountain, and then it goes in. That's a valley. And then there's another mountain, and then another valley, and a mountain. Well, each mountain is 31 days. Each valley is 30 days, except February, of course, which is 28 or 29. Take a look. January, it's a mountain, 31. February, it's a valley, 28, 29. March, a mountain, 31. April, a valley, 30. May, a mountain, 31. June, a valley, 30. July is a mountain, 31. August is a mountain, 31. September is a valley, 30 days hath September. Um, October is a mountain, 31. November is a valley, 30. And December is a mountain, 31. Happy New Year! Five for you and five for me. Now let's see who the winner will be. I drew a grid for tic-tac-toe, and we'll each try to get three in a row. I'll use a nickel. You use a penny. We'll play the game to see if any player wins. And if it's a draw, yep, 
You play the game differently from before, remove the last piece played, and then that player gets to go again. Like checkers, you each get to place your markers in an empty adjacent space, and the first to get three in a row wins this game called Son of Tic-Tac-Toe. Okay, you guys, close your eyes. Now watch me. No, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. Open your eyes and watch me. And then later you can close your eyes and try this stunt. I'm going to close my eyes and spread my arms out to the side, bend my elbows so that my fingers are pointing at each other, and then try to bring my fingertips together. Can you believe it? I can't do it. Put my fingertips... Try it. Close your eyes now. I'll watch you. Close your eyes, spread your arms out to the side, bend your elbows, and now try to bring your fingertips together. Well, that time it worked for me. Did it work for you? Using the letters in the words new door can you make just one word you can move the letters around but don't take any away and don't add any i can sure you can you want to see how this adds up to one word yeah oh the letters in new door spell one word you say to a friend shuffle a deck of cards and give them back to me thank you very much now please cut the deck in half please put the bottom half on top sideways thank you the card that you cut to was the four of spades and then you show that you were right. The card was cut to the four of spades. How did you know? Because the four of spades was the bottom card. And when the cards were handed back to me, I sneaked a peek. Then I put it down and the person cut and put the bottom half on top. And so of course, the card cut to will always be the bottom card. Now look, before you do any magic tricks, do it once for the mirror and once for the dog, at least. Then you might do it on your sister or brother before you do it for real live people. <laughs> You say to your friend, I have six coins. Now, making two rows of three coins each, that's no big deal. But can you make two rows of four coins each? And then you do it. Here's how. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Or you can do it this way. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's it. Do you know you don't have to spend any money to have fun? If you've got a fistful of pennies, you and your friend or friends, if you have more than one, can have a really good game. You fill a glass with water until it is almost overflowing, right up to the brim. That's good. Okay. And then one at a time, you take turns slipping in the pennies, and you try not to be the one who makes the water overflow. You slip in a penny, and your pal slips in a penny, and you slip in a penny. in a penny and the water overflowed and since I'm the only one playing I guess that means that I'm the loser <laughs> and if I made the water overflow I'm the loser and that makes me overflow because I don't like being the loser <laughs> into the palm of your hand you put a dime a nickel and five pennies and then you close up your fist and you say to your friend odd or even choose and no matter what your friend chooses, your friend is wrong. Here's why. If your friend says, odd, then you count up the value of the coins. Ten, and five is fifteen, and five is twenty. That's an even number. Therefore, your friend who said odd was wrong. And if your friend says, even, then you count up the number of coins. You say one, two, and five is seven. That is an odd number. You said even. You're wrong. Either way, your friend is wrong, 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 wrong. It's a toothpick game. You could play it alone or with friends. You put two toothpicks one way and two toothpicks the other way. Get off my finger. And then you put two toothpicks the first way. And the point is to see who can build the tallest toothpick tower before the toothpick tower topples. And then you play pick up sticks. You 
think that you're confused now? Oh, wait till you try this stunt. Cross your hands like this. Go ahead, do it. Grasp your fingers together, bring them in toward your belly button, up toward your chin, and then ask one of your friends to point to a finger, but don't touch it. Point to a finger and try to move it. No, uh, you'll find you are so confused, you won't know which finger to move, which is really odd when you consider how long you've had all those fingers. It's a betcha. I bet you can't write 1,000 in numbers without lifting your pen and without connecting up the numbers. You give up? Come on, give up. Thank you. Here's how you do it. You fold up the bottom flap of the paper. You start your one on the paper, bring it down onto the flap, circle around, cross your circle right at the flap, circle around, cross your circle right at the flap, circle around, cross your circle right at the flap, and lift up the flap, and oh, you have written 1,000 <laughs> without lifting up your pen and without connecting the numbers. Congratulations. Why should you never iron a four-leaf clover? Why should you never iron a four-leaf clover? Don't press your luck. <clears throat> okay, it's a mystery, sports fans. You've got a baseball, and you throw it away from you as hard as you can. It doesn't hit anything, nobody catches it, and there are no strings or elastics attached. The mystery is, the ball comes right back at you. How do you account for this? Do you give up? Come on, give up, I haven't got it all day. The solution is, when you threw the ball away from you, you threw it... Up. Here's a way to keep track of who gets how many points when you don't have a paper and pencil handy during a game. Give each player a length of string, and then as a player gets a point, the player gets to make a knot in the string. And at the end of the game, the player with the most knots in his or her string is the winner. This is number 88. Uh-uh, I got 88. Really? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a trick. I'm going to make this entire glass of milk disappear and also vanish right before your very eyes. Oh, good! <laughs> Ta-da! That's no trick. I could have done it that way. Yes, but I did it. And let me tell you, it was delicious. That's not 88. Here's 88. What is it that you have in December that you don't have in any other month? Uh, when your friends get finished guessing, you say what you have in December that you don't have in any other month is the letter D. You want a pet that you have to feed, start with a square of paper. Fold it so that the bottom corner meets the top corner. How do you do? Open it up. Fold it so one edge meets the center fold. Hello, center fold. Fold it so the other edge meets the center fold. Happy to make your acquaintance. And then just fold the whole thing in half. Now, at the very top, you have a sharp point. Bring down a head. There's the head. Open it up, turn the paper over, and fold along that same fold, but in the other direction, of course. Now lift it up and grab it behind the neck and put your thumb into the opening. Pull down with your pointer finger and you'll turn that fold inside out. Do you know what you've made? You've made a hungry crow. What does he want to eat? He wants to eat some bits of paper. I, I wrote a lot of numbers on a pad from 1 to 15 and I circled them and those are the sentries and they are guarding the fort. This is the fort, this square in the center. And you have to go from the fort and visit each sentry connecting up the lines in numerical order from one to two to three. And the problem is you mustn't cross over any of the lines. There's four. Now to five. All right, I can just get to five. I can't get to, yes I can, to six, but I can't get to seven. I'm skunked. That's it. That's how you play. And you see how many centuries you can visit without crossing any of the lines. What would you say if I told you I could stick this pin into this balloon without breaking it? Watch. Ka-chunk! Pin is in the balloon and it's not breaking. How did I do it? Same way you're going to do it. Put a piece of scotch tape onto the balloon. And the funny thing is that you stick a pin in, and it doesn't break. It's amazing, it's astounding, it's easy, it's not even scary. 
Here's a ball game you probably can play around the house because you don't play it with a great big ball that might bust stuff, but rather with a little wadded up ball of silver foil paper and you catch it in a cup. It's fun, watch. Throw. And to make the game harder, you play with a smaller cup. And you could also make it different by playing with two cups. Throw. In the next 20 seconds, how many of Disney's seven dwarfs can you name? Um, there's the sneezy guy, and there's the dopey guy. Lamp chop? Goofy? No, there's no goofy. You having trouble remembering them, too? Funny thing is, as much as we love them and as long as we've known them, most people can't just rattle off their names. Can you? Of course I can. I memorized it. There's dopey, doc, sneezy, sleepy, happy, grumpy, and... Rambo. Rambo? No. Bashful. Oh, bashful. Try it on your friends. What occurs once in a minute, twice in a moment, but not once in a thousand years? Sherry, I know the letter M. If you put your fists together like this, anybody can knock them apart with their fingers. But if you put your fists together and you really clench, go ahead, try to knock my fingers apart. Can't knock them apart, can't knock them apart. The reason is, before I really put my fists together, I put my thumb into the top fist. <laughs> Sneaky. Now, this is called a flying fish, and it flies. Oh, it twirls. It's good. Start with a strip of paper. Mine is seven inches by three quarters of an inch. It doesn't matter. Any length of a skinny strip will be swell, even teeny ones. From the top of one end, I tore a little slit. From the bottom, near the other end, I tore a little slit. I bend the piece around, and I link up the two slits. Now we have a flying fish, or at least we do have a fish. Let's see how she flies. What year in this century is the same upside down and downside up? You give up? 1961. It's a funny year. You can turn it on its head with no time warp. This is 98. No, I got 98. Really, really? Is it good, really? Okay, what do I do? Pick a card, any card. Any card, okay. Look at it, put it back in the deck, and now whisper it in my ear. Ladies and gentlemen, her card is the Queen of Hearts. Yeah, but uh, that's no trick. I told you what my card was. Of course, how else was I supposed to know? That's not 98. This is 98. It's a game. You name all the cards in numerical order. What does that mean? Ace, two, three, four, five, right through king. Oh. And as you name each card, you turn one card over, and you hope the card you named did not match the one you turned over. Do it. Okay, here we go. Ace. That's a nine, so I'm okay. Two. You're winning. Yay! Three. Uh, it's a three. I called three, so I'm out. Game's over. No, no. Now we shuffle the deck, and it's your turn. Oh, good. And the player who turns over the most cards without coming up with a match is the winner! Yay! It's a quarter. I cover it with a deck of cards, and I go, presto changeo. And it's a penny. Where did the quarter go? That's where the quarter went. You see, before I started, when I was alone, I hid a penny under a quarter. And I put some sticky tape, rolled backwards so the sticky side is outside, onto the box of cards. And so then when I cover the quarter with the box and go, presto changeo, why the quarter sticks to the box, and it seems like it turned into a penny. Practice before you do it for anybody. For 100, I have a tongue twister for you about Betty. Betty bought a bit of butter, but she said the butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make my batter bitter. But a bit of better butter will make my batter better. So Betty bought a bit of better butter, and it made her bitter batter better. Blah, blah. Did I do it? Did I do it? Sherry? No, not now, Lamb Chop. I have to figure out just one more to make 101. No, I got 101. No, no, no. I need a good one. No, this is a good one. Lamb Chop, you... Tear this piece of paper into four equal pieces, and I'll give you a quarter. Where are you going to get a quarter? Don't worry. You just tear this piece of paper into four equal pieces, and I'll give you a quarter. Four equal pieces. Okay, Lanchop, I'll give you four equal pieces. <laughs> then I'll go on and do my 101. Four equal pieces, all right. There we go. Fold it in half and in quarters. This should give us four equal pieces. 
Yes. All right, sweetie. One, two, three, four. Yes, those are four equal pieces of paper. And here's your quarter. That's a quarter of the sheet of paper. Yeah. I get it. Is that one? Yes, that's a good one. No, I mean, is that one for 101? That's 101. You just saw 101 things for kids to do that are fun. Magic tricks that were really slick. You saw them once. Did you do them quick? Easy puppets you could make in a minute. And the video cassette had lots more in it. Games and jokes and dopey dares. And you didn't like them all. Who cares with 101 things to do? I just know there was a bunch for you. 101, that's a lot. Let me tell you what this was not. This was not a TV show. What you got is a home video. So if you saw a stunt that left you grinning, run it again from the beginning. But don't just view it. Do it. You are really in control. Once again, you can let her roll till you come to a puppet or a game or a riddle or a favorite trick. Then quick, push the button, stop the tape and rewind until you find the beginning of the thing that you like best. Then do it and do it. Do you remember the number of your favorite stunt? If you do, you won't have to hunt. And the next time that you want to share your favorite with a friend, it'll still be there. Fast forward to the near the spot. Find the one that you like a lot. Then view it and do it. Well, now that you are finally done, you can do lots of things that are fun. Take another look at 101, but don't just view them. Do them, do them, do them. Do them. Don't just view them. Do them, do them, do them. Do them. Don't just view them. Do them, do them, do them. Do them. Don't just view them.